Hello, I am Loretha Gunnels Mayberry, and um, we are a team. Uh, to my left is Ernie Dorsey, and to my right is Marilyn McGarry. And uh, we have started this program called In, In Light Connection. And we hope that you have started to follow us and that you have joined in on this evening and um, we'll call others to, to tune in to see what God has given us to give to you on today. First of all, though, I want to go back to um, uh, one of the sessions. I, I think that will be coming up pretty soon and to apologize for giving you a wrong scripture. I was talking about the sons, uh, Issachar's sons, uh, knowing the signs of the time and knowing what to do. And I sent you to uh, 1 Samuel 5 and 4, but it's 2 Samuel 5 and 2. So I apologize for that. Now, today, we are going to go back and recap some things pertaining to uh, don't miss the wedding was, was what was in a prophetic word that Prophetess um, McGarry had given to us on one of our tapings. And so we wanted to go in further in depth with that to make sure that you um, understand exactly what it is that God is saying, don't miss the wedding. So I'm going to, it, with that, with that in, um, uh, right now, I'm gonna turn that over to her and so that she can go ahead and start to uh, share with you about that. Good evening, everyone. I will uh, try to give a summary of, of the, uh, the actual dream or utterance and pull out some of the key points. This was given to me uh, on the 13th of August. And the Lord had said, don't miss the wedding. He says that we should know our role and our place and our responsibility, and we are to stick to it. He says that watch distractions, that many will come and cause us to go this way or that way, and one door may open and it's not a door he opened. So it's very important we know where we're supposed to be. Uh, because we'll, we, we will be held accountable for our actions and what we do, especially in regards to our gifts and our talents that God has given us. He gave me Romans 8.28 where it said, um, paraphrasing it, uh, do you not know that it is I who causes all things to work together for good to those who love me and to those who are called according to my purpose? At this point in time, the Lord is really... Um, trying to uh, encourage us and, and, and support us in the area of um, some of the difficulties that we're, many of us are facing right now as it pertains to the COVID-19, the shutdowns, and even some of the violence that is occurring in, in our cities. He went on to say again, don't miss the wedding, telling us to stay focused and tuned in to him, the spirit. He says, no one can stand before the Son of Man for us, that we personally have to be responsible and held accountable to him. And this also um, brought up the fact that he, he says this is one, to, one of those times that we should be selfish because we need to know him and have personal relationship with him. God says that we are to be witnesses to others and not hindrances to other people. He said, there is no way or no other way to enter heaven but by him, through Jesus. Because the Son of Man will come when you do not know, not even Jesus knows, not even the angels know when he's coming. But he kept saying, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, and I come quickly. So at, at this hour, it's almost like it's really a crucial, pivotal time for the church, the body of Christ, for us personally. And then um, Luke 19, I believe it's verse 13, that particular scripture talks about, it's very similar to the 
the five wise and five foolish virgins, but this pertains to servants, as God has given us talents. And he says, I'm not coming now. This is not the time, as he was telling the disciples during that, his time here on earth, but for he, us to occupy until he comes. And that's what's important is we need to find our role, find our call, find our position, find our place, and stay in it. Seeking God for direction. Um, because, again, we are we're definitely living in these last days. And, and, you know, the birth pains are getting stronger and stronger. And Jesus could come at any moment. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, um, what was your last statement about occupy until he comes? Yes, the Lord told us to occupy until he comes, until he returns. Could you uh, expound on, the, on that part of uh, what he's saying mm -hmm. about occupy until he comes? Well, the, you know, the word occupy means to employ, to conquer, take possession of. It means to dominate, rule, and reign here on earth. So the Lord is telling us to domain our dominion, what he's given us responsibility for. Okay. I, 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 can you go a little bit deeper with that, though? I mean, what is he saying to us, to the people, to, to, mm -hmm. to do uh, because he's not, I don't believe that he's saying just, you know, sit around, look, and mm -mm. go out to eat, and uh, go to the park, and uh, uh, those things. But I, I think that um, even to look at that, I think to translate it, it would be be busy. Mm -hmm. And I, I think really that it would be about going about God, the Lord's business, God's mm -hmm. business. That's correct. I, yeah, I, 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 be, I believe that uh, mm -hmm. if you are a, a an evangelist, you ought to be working out of that gift. Yeah. If you are a prophet or a prophetess, mm -hmm. uh, you ought to be seeking God to get uh, whatever it is that's on his mind and his heart to give to the people yeah. uh, because this is a very crucial time and people that's why we are on this set even is to what God gives us is to get it out to the people to be a, a if I could say it like this a mouthpiece mm -hmm. for God Amen. and so I, I believe that if you know and if you're a pastor you should be uh, shepherding the people and mm -hmm. telling the people about the coming of Christ because here the Lord knew he was he was headed to Jerusalem to die mm -hmm. uh, he was it wasn't about him establishing his kingdom uh, not yet and so even the Pharisees and uh, his disciples mm -hmm. was looking for it to be established immediately and he wanted them to know, even in that, in that uh, passage, mm -hmm. that no, I, I want you to be busy. That's right. After all, John, I believe John 14, 12, he says that you can do the same thing that I did when I walked the earth. Uh, Luke 10, 19 talks about how he left us in authority. Mm -hmm. Well, the first word, power, is it means authority, that he left us power of attorney, that we are to be here working and, and, and prepare, get people preparing and, and uh, bringing in the harvest uh, for his second coming. Mm -hmm. Would you yeah, agree with I that? I agree, I totally agree. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, his return is intimate. Mm -hmm. That word means at any time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's mm -hmm. no warning. Mm-hmm. And at a twinkling of an eye. Right, 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 right. You could say, come. You hear that trumpet, that voice trumpeting. Yes. Calling his church. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. The rapture. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And then, um, Ernie, 
your, uh, your scripture comes out of uh, Matthew 25, 1 through 13. And, and, and what we're attempting to do is to make it very clear to you, to our audience, that Christ will return mm -hmm. and that we definitely need to be prepared. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'll say this before I turn it over to her, to uh, Ernie, is that God does not want us to wait until we're on a, a deathbed confession. He, want, he wants us to love him and to serve him now. Mm -hmm. And uh, there has been, well, I don't want it to sound like it's been a whole lot of times, but a couple of times I have had a phone call come in mm. to pray with someone who is transitioning. And they held the phone to their ear and let me know that they were shaking their head yes to everything that I was saying or ministering to them. But what we're doing, we, we want, want you to understand that Christ is coming back and that we need to prepare. Amen. And he, he, he expects for us to prepare. Mm -hmm. He don't expect for us to sit around and just look, look mm -hmm. on to different things that's mm -hmm. going on. He wants us to exercise the gifts and the, the, the talents that we have on our lives. So now, um, Matthew 25, 1 to 13 is about the 10 virgins. And so I, at that point, I'm gonna turn that over to you, Ernie. Mm -hmm. That's the, mm -hmm. that's the servants, the three, the servants. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's about the, uh, the, the three servants of God whom he gave talents to, he gave them gifts, he gave them jobs, more or less. What? And he said, Mm -hmm. I think that's 20. 25, Matthew 25, yeah, 25. 1 to 13. Oh, 1 might be 13. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The 10 virgins. Okay, because it goes right into, okay. Okay, I'm sorry, I apologize. That's okay, that's uh, all right. Okay, it's, 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 the first part is I went straight to the servants, but they all tie together. Uh, the first part is about concerning the, the brides, the 10 brides. Uh, they, were, they all had lamps. Mm -hmm. And they were to maintain their lamps until uh, Jesus came. They didn't know what time it was going to be. They didn't know when it was going to be. Exactly. And that's what uh, Prophetess Marilyn is saying is that we don't know the time. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if God gave us the time, then we could wait to the very end and then yeah. try to get ourselves ready. But that's not so. And what they, that's what they did. They thought that they could do just that is do whatever they wanted to do. They could use up all their oil. Uh, and then uh, when it came time for uh, the arrival of the Christ, he, they, they were out of oil. Mm -hmm. And they foolishly asked, thought that the other, the other brides were gonna just give them <laughs> some of theirs. Right. And so they so. have waited patiently. They have waited, they probably sat through uh, all kinds of conditions. Uh, mm -hmm. people sneering at them, laughing at them, making fun of them, uh, but they, they went ahead and they waited it through. And so when the time came and it says, and he said, go, come on, let's go, then they were ready. They were ready to just walk away. So if we don't have that time to prepare at the end, mm -hmm. we have to be ready. That's right. We have to stay ready. Mm -hmm. And so by the time that he came, the Christ came, then... The, the ten, the, the five foolish brides were not prepared. And so my thinking is that they perished mm. uh, because the other five were ready. They yeah. were prepared. Mm -hmm. That's true. And everybody's not going to make it in. Right. And the Bible tells exactly. us in Second Timothy chapter 3 that in the last days are going to be perilous times. Mm -hmm. And so and, our and what, faith is when they be were ready, they tested. had they they had their marching orders, mm -hmm. but they just refused to to adhe adhere to them. They yeah. just decided that we were just going to do what we wanted to do mm -hmm. and then we'll worry about that time when it comes, mm -hmm. which is what we do sometimes is we wait and we don't prepare, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. we should be ready to go. Exactly. 
and the same with the uh, with the three the three servants, mm-hmm. whom God gave He gave the talents to, and He said, "Okay, let's see what you can do with them." Mm-hmm. And instead, they instead of utilizing them, they they just said, "Okay, well, you know, I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna do this." Mm-hmm. Well, the other the first two, they they did wisely. Yeah. They u- utilized the talents, mm-hmm. but the last one decided, hey, I'm just going to keep mine, mm-hmm. you know, so I don't spend it, so nobody don't steal it from me, mm-hmm. and then I'll have it when he comes. But there was no reproduction mm-hmm. from his talent. It yeah. just fell by the wayside. Mm-hmm. And so that's why God was angry with him, because he, he had not used the talent wisely. Yeah. So, um, Ernie, with um, with the virgins, how do you see that um, their actions apply to today, where we are today? It's like being saved. You know, you have opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to answer the call. Answer the call of Christ and say, you know, I'm going all the way with you, God. But if you mm-hmm. wait, thinking that you have time, you you don't know the hour, you don't mm-hmm. know the day, you don't know the sequence, mm-hmm. you don't know when it's going to happen. Only God knows. Mm-hmm. And so it's best to be prepared at all times. Mm-hmm. Just be ready. They sh- the first the f- the foolish brides should have followed the, the wise brides. And held on to their oil then, mm-hmm. but they didn't. They didn't make that decision. And today we make those same kinds of decisions. We may serve God all our lives, and then we get to a point where we say we're tired. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he, I didn't. This didn't happen. That didn't happen. But God said, "You don't know the time, mm-hmm. so be prepared at all times. Just worship the Lord, serve the Lord, love the Lord." Mm-hmm. Do as he has uh, commanded us to do. I want to say this real quick, that um, some call them hypocrites because they seem to have felt like they kind of knew, you know, that the, that, the bride, that the bridegroom would be on time and everything, and they went up in there and didn't have no oral hardly. Mm-hmm. And they, they both were kind of at fault because they both fell asleep, the foolish and the wise. Mm-hmm. They, they all fell asleep. But uh, the, the foolish ones seem to have felt like they, you know, they, they, they had time, they, you know, and everything. But we, again, we don't know when Christ is coming back. The Lord does not even know himself, right. nor the angels. Only God knows uh, when he will be returning. And I, I thought that was pretty neat how they said that they felt, that, well, this one thing that I looked at, that they were being hypocritical mm-hmm. because they felt like they knew mm-hmm. when he was going to come back. And so no one knows. The Bible right. said that he will come like a thief in the night. night. Yes. And so I wonder how many people who are out on the beaches and, and going to the parties and uh, doing uh, whatever they feel big enough to do, mm-hmm. if uh, they are really preparing for Christ Christ's coming return. back. You know, I look at where we are today, and we are in, um, if I could say it like this, a mess. Mm -hmm. Because we have this virus going on, and and we we are not loving on each other, excuse me, like the Bible tells us to love on each other. Uh, All of that's a part of preparing for Christ to come back. Exactly. Forgiving, we, exactly. we, we, we're, we're not forgiving people like we should. He said, if we don't forgive, he's not going to forgive us. And so all of those things are preparation mm-hmm. for Christ's return. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I, I thank God for everything that uh, you each have said mm-hmm. because surely it's an eye opener yes. to mm-hmm. our audience. 
to, 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 to recognize mm -hmm. where they are. Mm -hmm. Search yourself. Mm -hmm. see, see where you are. Mm -hmm. Search yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and not looking at your neighbor, right. but okay. search your own heart. That's right. You, you know, we, we, we got, we've got to get our own lives in, in shape. Mm -hmm. Not somebody else's, but, but our own lives. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so we went back and, and, and dug into this and hoped that the depthness of it all has, has really helped you mm -hmm. on today. Mm -hmm. uh, as we are doing this study and working with these, these things, it's causing me to have a closer look at myself. Mm -hmm. And I, I thank God for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I want to um, make a plea to the young people to begin to understand that Christ will come back. He's, he's not on his way. You hear some people say Christ is on his way. He can, he can, he can be here in the snap of your finger, the blink mm -hmm. of your eye and you don't want to put it off mm -hmm. until tomorrow. Amen. You want to begin to exercise what God has given you through his son. Mm -hmm. Jesus died on the cross mm -hmm. for every man, woman, and child. It, 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 it's not about race, it's not about, it, it's, it's all about love that God has for human beings and his son died on the cross for us to have mm -hmm. eternal life, Amen. eternal life. Mm -hmm. And so I suggest that you turn your face to the Lord even right now and begin to ask him to forgive you mm -hmm. of all your sins mm -hmm. and ask him to come into your heart and save you I want you to know it's one of the easiest things that you can do. Just like your mother carried you for nine months, mm -hmm. by the snap of your finger, you can be a saved individual. You, because the Bible tells us in 3 John, it, it, it chapter 3 of John, St. John, mm -hmm. that we, Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. Amen. And so it's the spirit, we are made of a three parts, the soul, the body, and the spirit. And the spirit, when we, when we just go in, uh, out of your heart, <clears throat> I'm not, excuse me, I'm not talking about lip service. I'm talking about your heart. Mm -hmm. When you come out of your heart and say, Lord, <clears throat> forgive me, mm -hmm. for I have sinned. Amen. Come into my heart and save me. Just like snapping your finger, you are a saved individual. And guess what? He comes and he dwells on the inside of you. He dwells on the inside of you. And he will, he will teach you, he will guide you into all truth. So again, we thank you for tuning in this evening. Mm -hmm. And we hope that you will catch our next program. Mm -hmm.